Welcome back to the Nutanix Community Podcast. I'm Angelo, and in today's episode, Dwayne chats with Jeff Hall, Manager Technical Certification Development. And we're diving into the exciting world of technical certifications with a focus on a new certification, NC2 with Azure and AWS. Join us as we explore the ins and outs of this certification, the importance of getting certified in today's tech landscape, and how you can take advantage of certifications to level up your skills as there's no better time than now. Let's join the conversation. Who doesn't like free things? On today's podcast, we have Jeff Hall from what I will say is a certification team at Nutanix, but that actual name could be totally wrong. Welcome to the show, Jeff. Thanks. Great to be here. We... um. We have worked in the past together, and I think I, uh, as far as the certifications go, are helping with that process in, in the team. I have like to think I've done the least amount, but um, I was happy to do some work around NC2. And uh, yeah, it was actually pretty fun. I, I had no clue about the amount of work or team members it ter- took to deliver a certification. So I think... Uh, you know, maybe just start off talking about who the heck is Jeff Hall, and then we can deep dive into uh, some of the work you're doing around getting certified at Nutanix. Definitely. Well, I'm Jeff Hall. I'm manager of uh, technical certification development here at Nutanix. So I work on a, uh, a, a team of five that um, are focused on creating our different certification exams and running different events and promotions and, and so on. So uh, we have a lot going on these days, for sure. We have um, seven, uh, six different tracks of certifications, actually, and uh, three different levels, actually four different levels. Um, so just kind of giving an overview of those levels of certification that we offer uh, at Nutanix, we have an associate level, we have the professional level, and the Nutanix certified master's level as well as um, an expert level, Nutanix certified expert. So at the associate level, it's, it's going to be more targeted towards uh, folks just wanting to be conversant in the technologies. I would say maybe a junior administrator, like a very junior administrator at the, at the Nutanix certified professional level, we're looking more at administrative to senior administrative levels. Um, of the different products and technologies that we have here at Nutanix. Uh, Nutanix certified master level is going to be a very senior um, person from an administrative perspective, uh, possibly even um, someone who is moving into architect and, and design possibly. And then they've been, and, been in the industry a while is what you're saying. I like, guess that's not something you would just take off the cuff. Yeah. Yeah. That's, you know, from a, I guess a time perspective, the associate level uh, individual would have a few months, maybe three to six months of experience, um, general IT, and and is just getting in Nutanix technologies. Professional would be one to two years of general IT, and maybe six to twelve months of Nutanix. Uh, at the master's level, it's going to be more three to five um, good years of IT experience. Uh, you know, with a one to two years of of New tennis experience at the expert level at the NCX level, it gets a little different. That one's more design and architecture focused. So whereas the associate professional and master level exams are going to be a combination of multiple choice and actually live lab uh, performance exams at the expert level, we're going to see a, um, a design and a panel defense of that design. So it gets uh, a, a bit more involved. At that level, so yeah, and of course, uh, several years of, of technical and architectural experience, generally at the expert level. I used to be quite a certification junkie. I think back in the day, um, I have since went the other way, um, but I think it's probably more of a, maybe being too comfortable where I am. I guess, uh, but it hasn't been not from a lack of wanting to learn new things. I think the the job role I'm in kind of naturally facilitates that that urge. What what do you what's your thoughts on on taking certs? Like it 
what outside of learning the technology, what other things w- would it bring to an individual? Well, first and foremost, I think uh, certifications is a great way to learn technologies. It provides a path. It provides um, a direction to go from a lower level through, you know, sequentially higher level. So from a pure learning perspective, certification is great for that. But it also provides um, a, a check on that knowledge, right? So whether a person is applying for a, a new job, um, looking for a promotion in their current job, looking to branch out into um, additional responsibilities and directions, maybe it's not just at the individual level. Maybe it's a Nutanix partner that needs to certify to deliver certain services and products. Uh, certification exams are what is generally used to gauge that uh, that readiness for that. Uh, these are, you know, what we call high stakes proctored exams. They're psychometrically um, validated and rigorous. It's a rigorous exam. If you'll hear that reference in academia a lot, so it follows a legally defensible, you know, set of uh, steps. And you've seen some of that again by being in. Uh, some of our workshops, there's a lot of steps that go into ensuring, you know, from both a process and documentation perspective that once someone passes a certification exam, that they legitimately know the content and the product set that is covered within that level and type of exam. So it, it, uh, one, yeah, I, I think one thing that is hard when learning new technologies if you don't have a driver of some kind, it's like, I want to learn containers as an example. But if you don't have like a, a practical problem to solve, it makes it almost impossible to just start looking on the web, you know, for like, oh, I know how to do this. But, you know, there's that kind of applicability aspect that needs to happen. I think that, you know, thinking about it, that's like one area, at least having been involved in the certifications at Nutanix, it seems like that. That is a no-brainer? Well, absolutely. Yeah, it, it provides the material to, to, to study, the uh, again, a good starting point, a good direction to, to go in. And I've certainly, I've certainly hit that same difficulty over the years, wanting to learn a few different things, but I didn't have a good use case for it. I didn't have something in front of me that needed to be completed to achieve that. <clears throat> so it, it became harder to stick with it. A certification path, um, you know, we have the Nutanix University that a um, person can sign up for or log in, and it provides a full learning plan to to go from the very beginning all the way through the different objectives, uh, whether it be the associate level exams or any one of our six different, uh, you know, certification tracks that are at the professional level that uh, we have, you know, we have the different products and, and technologies covered that fulfills a person's interest. And that's really one of the things we have tried to do over the years is to expand into multiple certification tracks so that someone, they may start, like for example, the the NCP, Nutanix Certified Professional Multi-Cloud Infrastructure, right? The NCP MCI exam covers our base core technologies of AOS, AHV, Prism Element, Prism Central, but maybe they have an interest in uh, storage or end user computing. They would be able to then uh, pivot and certify in one of those additional tracks as well, which would then recertify all of their existing same level and lower level certs um, for an additional two years. So it is a great way to grow, not just, you know, we, we have the whole discussion of scale up versus scale out, right? You know, rather than just scaling up, to the higher levels of a same certification track, they can always expand out into the other tracks, you know, scaling out in that direction as well. Now, the, I guess probably the main, one of the main reasons or drivers that we're here are two pretty new certifications or courses, I guess the courses that are generally available now around NC2, Azure, and uh, also AWS. Maybe like, you know, having a first look at building and maybe describe what you can expect out of taking those courses. Okay. Yeah. So uh, we have one common certification. It's going to be the Nutanix Certified 
certified professional cloud integration certification that can be achieved by taking uh, one of two certification exams that is backed up with training. So that would be the uh, Nutanix Certified Professional Cloud Integration AWS exam or Cloud Integration Azure exam. And each of those have their own uh, specific course that has been built. So they're, uh, you know, they're both going to have a very common set of uh, objectives that are customized to either the AWS or Azure cloud environments, you know, when we're building that, that hybrid multi-cloud environment. So uh, looking now, at, oh, I'm sorry, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I'm just going to say those, those two exams, obviously there's an NC2 part and then the hyperscaler. Do you have to be fairly proficient in those hyperscalers before you, you know, decide you want to take that track or course rather? Um, the, the training and, you know, the Nutanix certification isn't going to get into the, the depths of AWS resource configurations and Azure resource configurations. So there are some suggested prerequisites in that area, right? And we do have the exam blueprint guides that covers those uh, specific uh, suggestions. For example, with AWS, like we're, uh, our training is not going to, for example, cover AWS networking basics. It's not really going to get into the AWS framework as a, as a background. Uh, we will start with that base knowledge in place. Um, Azure is going to be sort of the similar, right? The, um, you know, the hybrid uh, networking infrastructure training that Azure, Microsoft Azure has, and, you know, the foundation services for network there. So uh, the the network training and certification does not go into, you know, the depths of configuring those AWS and Azure resources. Uh, we will start with that basic knowledge in place and look at, you know, the Nutanix specific configurations. More in in the bounds, I guess, what you need to to do your job around NC2, you know, maybe some configuring DR or how to migrate your workloads into, you know, said cloud provider once you have NC2 stood up. Yeah, absolutely. It's, um, from a course and exam perspective, you know, we're going to expect folks to just be conversant on the basic, you know, technology concepts, understanding things like you know, customers, organizations, clusters, and users, um, basic deployment processes, you know, basic elements, uh, you know, VPCs, for example, you know, subnets, you know, the, the some of those common networking elements. Um, from an Azure perspective, uh, you know, we'll see some different terminologies such as, you know, VNets, uh, for example. Um after, you know, once the environment is deployed, you know, the training and then the exams, you know, we move into basic management, training and testing. So creating VMs, creating basic networks, you know, backup and recovery, uh, that sort of thing. And then monitoring and, and, and maintenance. So once the environment's in place, you know, being able to identify those management tasks and other things like performing upgrades, uh, engaging with support, investigating issues at a basic level. Now, because NC2 on Azure has some flow, by some, I mean, it, it does have flow networking components. So I'd imagine there'd be some bit of Nutanix virtual flow networking involved as well. Absolutely. Yeah, that's, in fact, um, one of the one of the challenges that has been discussed along the way with the different subject matter experts that we've worked with is, you know, really flow networking is a, is a major component or a significant component of the NC2 on Azure exam and course. So definitely uh, a person would be well served with researching that and studying, you know, that particular technology and preparation. Yeah. I think it's kind of like, I guess if you're kind of hemming and hawing between the two, I would, you know, off the top of my head, I would probably recommend the Azure one just because um, once you have a base of flow virtual networking and you, if you're going to go down the path of HV on-prem, man, you you just have a, 
a clean way of networking across your environments, which could be multiple different clouds. So it's like, it's, it's, I don't know, it seems like a pretty good value add to be included in, in that course. Oh, certainly. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's, it's a good coverage of that material in the course uh, and, and likewise on, you know, the exam, I would say more so in the course um, and not as, not, not as heavy on the exam. Although that's, that's generally how we like to, to build it. But, you know, to add into your point of, you know, one exam versus the other, an individual is not going to generally take both the AWS and Azure exam to become certified. They only need one. And it's been my experience from the conversations talking with the different subject matter experts that a company is generally ever going to use one environment over the other. They will be an NC2 on Azure shop or they will be an NC2 on AWS shop generally and would only need that one environment. So it will also depend on where a person's coming from. Yeah, I think my my experience, it's only the very large companies that have multiple cloud providers just because it's, you know, for the the normal person, like the non-Nutanix, it really is, it can be another silo. Like you have a totally separate cloud team, just like we had storage and different networking teams. So it can be quite onerous, I guess, you know, if the, the more you venture off is more stuff you have to, to protect, maintain security, you know, the list goes on. So you can see why you definitely would want to, to limit <laughs> or, or pick and choose where you hang your hat. Absolutely. Yeah. There's, there's a, a lot of elements involved in, and that's one of the main reasons why we have suggested some prerequisite training, um, within both the AWS and Azure environments. Now, part, part of the course is what, is there a hands-on lab component? Do I get, to, uh, is it all textbook or is there still a bit of hand-on as well? Nope. The, the train, yes, the training is going to have, uh, labs included as well. So just giving an example, uh, within the, the Azure course, you know, we're going to see labs within each of the modules, regardless of courses, the course that you take, you know, uh, accessing and exploring the NC2, NC2 console, creating and managing organizations, adding users. Uh, we have labs for all of those managing authorization. You know, there's configuring Prism Element, pr- pr- configuring Prism Central on-prem and creating the clusters and all the way through, you know, additional management tasks of creating VMs and disaster recovery. Um, and then, uh, you know, things like monitoring the cluster health, creating log bundles. There's a actually a wealth of labs in each of the training courses that provides a lot of hands-on training. So yeah, that that is a major element of these courses. So I've taken the course, or maybe I've just been playing with Nutanix a long time. I want to, you know, what's at, what's after the course? You know, going back to that when I opened up with free, what? Mm-hmm. Uh, how do I ensure that? My employer knows I, I know what I'm talking about. Well, you take the, uh, you, you know, the the training is never required for our certification exams, but it's always heavily recommended and it is top notch training. So you take the training course uh, and then you would then sit the particular exam that you want to sit. And we will have a promotion uh, that will be running from March 19th to April 19th where a person can register for the exam for free. That's a $199 value. And there will be, um, you know, the particular coach to use at registration that will ensure that it's a free cost. So, yeah, especially in the beginning, since this is a brand new program, brand new certification, uh, we'll have a 30-day promotion where the person can jump in there and take it for free. And I really encourage folks to do so. The, the testing, is it at a testing center or online or how to, you know, once you say, I'm going to do this thing, how do you go about taking it? You can do either one. So you can go through NutanixUniversity.com and register for the exam to be either online, which means you could take it at your home or your office, or you can go into a testing center and there's thousands, you know, around the world uh, that a person can then walk into one of the testing centers and and take it just like they would at their home with, with the difference would be just the check-in process, right? So you're at home, you would 
do that check-in process directly with the exam proctor versus a testing center, you would do that at the front desk before walking in to the testing room. Yeah, those those testing centers are a different beast, I guess. It's good. It's probably, I guess you just have to go do it. You know, you have to get experience with being in that type of environment. If you if you like if you're like me and been outside of the school environment for a while, <laughs> it, it's a uh, yeah, um, yeah. Every, everybody's going to have their own sort of preference there. In fact, we had a uh, it, we had a lot of requests for that. the The testing center option has been recently added within the last year or so, at a lot of requests. So, uh, yeah, it, it just gets down to what makes a person the most comfortable. Well, the exam certification, or at least um, maybe it won't be free anymore, but when it comes to dot .next, will there be the ability, which is, I guess, dot .next is somewhat close in May, would you be able to take it there? Absolutely. Yeah, dot .next this year is going to be after the live launch of the exam, so uh, which is going to be in late April. So, uh, yes, uh, and that's one of the great things about attending our our different conferences. In fact, we have a couple of different, different types of events where we offer free training. Uh, one is the major conferences like you just mentioned, like uh, Dot Next, and we have Global Tech Summit, which is coming up very soon. And we offer all of our certification exams for free on a walk-up on-demand basis. So you don't even have to register or schedule in advance, generally, with the exception of our new tenant certified master exam. That requires a little bit of advanced registration. So it's a great way to become exposed to those different exams and technologies a person may be interested in. We uh, wow. also have, uh, we, we have another set of events that we have started in this last year called review and exam day events. We call them red events because uh, the acronym there. And we have covered every corner of the globe, I think at this point within the last year, uh, all of the different regions and um, open to, you know, you know, we have customer events, we've had partner events, and uh, it's also been a very popular way to take the exam for free in a more, you know, relaxed environment than, than it would be with a, a formal proctor online or in a testing center. No, that sounds great. Um, so the last, last 20 minutes, you've been listening to this great information, but there are some fancy guitars behind you. I want to ask, you know, tell me about them. Are you, are you, do you play in a band? Do you just jam away? What's your, what's your gig with those guitars? Uh, I wish I had some, some fancy and impressive stuff to tell you there. I'm, I'm, I'm learning. I'm beginning to learn and, um, they're, they're both pretty cheap guitars. Uh, they're, I would say the, the top one is a, is, is a Fender knockoff. You know, it's, it's a Squire. And the bottom one is a, a a knockoff of a Les Paul. So yeah, nothing impressive there. I do have a teammate that is pretty fantastic on guitar, though. So I could I could always um, maybe we could get him to to do a little concert for us at some point. Yeah, but I'm just learning. I'm just sort of in the beginning phases. I, I played uh, piano my whole life, and I grew up with that. And I've gotten to a point where now where I just I want to learn something different. So I started with those. The, the end of the day, the most of us will be around a campfire singing. So it's like, that's, that's all you need. Um, well, that's really great info. So we'll, in the show notes, we'll try to get links posted. Um, we're recording just a bit before we should launch the same time as the actual exam going live for registration, or at least to get that free code. So you can go off and increase your knowledge of Nutanix and hyperscalers. But uh, yeah, thanks again for, for joining us. Any, any last thoughts? Well, just uh, everyone be uh, on the lookout for that blog post. That'll have all of that, you know, information about, you know, the pre-promotion and the registration codes that'll be needed. That'll be coming out very soon. And I look forward to, you know, being of any assistance that we can on the certification exams and, seeing folks out at our events. All right. Well, thanks, Jeff. It was a pleasure having you. Please be on the lookout and uh, we'll be hearing more from certifications in the future. Thanks again. Thanks a lot. 
And that's a wrap for today's episode of the Nutanix Community Podcast. I hope you found the discussion on NC2 with Azure and AWS certifications informative. Don't forget to check out the show notes for links to further resources and information on how you can take advantage of our latest promotions at next.nutanix.com. Thanks for tuning in. And from your friends here at Nutanix, have a great week. Thank you.